Even though action cameras like the GoPro are quickly dominating online action videos, the market is definitely for those willing to invest in some serious gear. The GoPro 4 Silver Edition runs for $400, and the Black Edition tacks on another $100 for the addition of full 4K video. At prices like this, you will not be investing in one of these cameras unless you are sure you have some adventure-filled days ahead that will make the internet want to jump off a mountain or explore a volcano. There are other cheaper options, but none of them really offer simplicity and a design that is fit for consumers who are just now looking to get into action video. This is where Polaroid enters the picture. This is Polaroid's Cube. They are calling this an HD lifestyle action video camera, and they are hoping it will appeal to the audience of consumers who want to get into action video, but are looking to experiment with a cheaper camera before going the distance with a much more professional model. This camera comes in at $99, which is perfect for appealing the first time action camera buyer. The camera itself is weatherproof and splash proof, so on its own, it could handle getting wet in the rain or briefly being dropped in a puddle, but don't take this thing diving into the pool and expect it to last long. They have plenty of accessories for that, as well as many other things. Unfortunately, none of them come with the camera. Battery life on this camera should be enough to get you 90 minutes of recording time. The LED indicator is how you can tell when the camera is recording, has taken a photo, or has even turned on. Since everything is controlled by the one simple button on top, you will need to remember the number of pushes to take photos, video, or even just turn on the camera. I feel like a dedicated power switch would have suited this camera far better. Photos are 6 megapixels on a JPEG file, and video capture for this camera comes in at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720 on an H.264 format, both of which shoot at 30 frames per second. Photo and video quality are okay for a camera like this. There is obviously some fisheye distortion, and it isn't as sharp as you might like, but remember, this is a $100 action camera. Having a choice to switch between 720p and 1080p on the back may make sense for storage reasons, but 720p comes in at the same 30 frames per second as 1080p. So unless you have small micro SD card storage, I couldn't see any reason why I or anyone else would switch down from 1080p to 720p. And the magnet on the bottom was a nice touch. But since most everything I thought would be slightly magnetic proved me wrong, the only surface I could stick this to where it would be upright was the ground. And the things it would stick to surprised me with the strength of the magnet, but it did not reassure me that putting a camera like this on the hood of a moving car, or even moving anything, would make it secure. And all of these things that were okay, but seemed to be falling short of okay, made me think about what if scenarios for this camera. So get this. Polaroid wants this to be a consumer-friendly action camera, right? Then why not have it connected to one of the biggest network of consumers who share non-professional video besides YouTube? Instagram. First of all, they already have the camera dressed as a 3D printout of the Instagram logo. What's more perfect for marketing an Instagram camera coming from the company that at one point literally made Instagram cameras? Next, this will open up the camera to shoot in a square format instead of widescreen. The widescreen video doesn't look that great anyway, so why not? Also, square video would totally take care of the problem of having the camera at a proper angle with that magnet that allows it to stick to some surfaces. Throw in some Bluetooth connectivity and maybe even the ability to broadcast live video from the camera or broadcasting POV video either on Facebook or Instagram. Wow, Polaroid should have hired me as part of their cube team. I would have made this camera a hundred times better. Anyway. Time for my overall thoughts on the camera. This camera is far from perfect for anyone looking for a cheap alternative to a GoPro, and it really doesn't seem all too perfect for consumers either. On one hand, you could say the camera tried too hard at being simple with the one button function not exactly being as intuitive as some would hope. On the other hand, the camera seems like it would have great potential if in a later version they managed to throw in some Bluetooth to connect to iPhones or Android phones to share pictures and video directly to Instagram. If you don't care about add-ons such as those and are just looking for a cheap way to get into action video, this is the best choice right now, even if you need to go out and get a hundred separate accessories. As a real competitor to GoPro or any other semi-professional grade action camera, this doesn't even come close.